So welcome to Warrior Wednesday. Glad to see several of you here on the screen, and I know some people will be joining us on YouTube later, so really happy you've taken some time for yourself this morning or today, whenever you view this. Um, we're going to use the analogy today of um, a snake shedding its skin for our yoga practice. And before I hit record, we had just a brief conversation about how a lot of us are just experiencing just being over all of this, just being over it, sick, you know, sick of now where I live, picking up trees that have fallen, tired of quarantine, tired of wearing a mask, tired of politics, like we're just tired. And um, even to the extent of, you know, depression and anxiety and sleeplessness, we really, as a society right now are struggling with so many things and that's why you're here you're here to get a little reprieve from all those things you're tired of and so this analogy of a snake coming out of its skin is so beautiful to me because it resembles the way i'm living right now doesn't fit anymore this is constrictive. I can't be like this anymore. I have to let something go. I need to emerge into something new. It just, it doesn't fit anymore. My soul, I love this one. My soul is too big for the skin I currently wear. So we'll use our physical practices this morning to demonstrate what it might feel like to just shed a skin that no longer fits. So think in terms of like, maybe it's an idea that is old. Maybe it's a way of thinking that needs to be shed and a new perception can emerge. We'll use those kind of analogies today. So go ahead and come into child's pose to begin this physical practice. And I'd like you to find a little curled up ball version of child's pose, not your big spread out comfortable child's pose. Let's start. Maybe knees are a little closer together. Maybe hands are under the head and elbows are in tight and like curl down into this little rock like position that feels constrictive and small. And just see, you know, what's, what's there for you, like this desire to take up a little more space. Notice if your breathing feels constricted when your body is in this tight ball. And then begin to find the child's pose that feels more open, knees coming out wider, arms stretching out long toward the front of your mat, maybe even longer, farther than you normally stretch. Take up as much space on your mat as you possibly can. Spread your fingers wider than you normally do. Stretch your skin. And now see how breath feels. You're still constricted around your knees and your hips, but your shoulders and your spine now have a little more space to receive breath. So breathe there, breathe into the places where you can. Our asana practice provides us many examples of poses that are both restrictive and expansive. So then go ahead and peel yourself up into a tabletop position and begin to move your spine here up and down in cat and cow. And move as if you were a snake and you put one part of your body on a branch and you're kind of trying to slide out of that skin. And in both directions, see if you can feel a little more stretch, a little more space than you normally feel when we do this.
You might notice that your body wants to move sideways more. Your body might want to move forward and back a little more. With hands and knees planted here, how much space can you take up on your mat? So let's start to move forward and back more. Plant your hands, draw your heart forward, come all the way up onto your knees and lift your chest, breathe in. And then breathe out to press your hips back over your heels. Take the longest stretch in both of those directions. As we begin this practice of shedding skin, you might think of one idea that you're clinging to right now or one label that you have put on yourself that feels limiting. And maybe just that one thing can be the focus of your practice today. Let's come forward all the way and we'll lower down to the belly. And I'm going to introduce the pose of the day, which is called Bhujangasana Cobra Pose. So of course we have to do this one. Our hands are close to our shoulders. Our elbows are close to our ribs. The feet are on the floor. Begin to raise your head the way a cobra would raise its head. Open your collarbones, push your heart forward. Hands are very light on the mat. And now notice this pose is restrictive. We can't go very far, but it's also expansive. With your hands pulling on the mat, imagine sliding a little bit more out of your skin in this pose. Let your breath exaggerate that action. And then exhale, chin toward the mat, press back to tabletop. Tucking toes, let's lift our hips into downward facing dog. And here's another place where we can take the feet wider, put a bend in our knee, then the other, and just start to find edges that don't fit anymore. Skin that can be shed. Move around, explore and play in this posture. Take a deep breath in with a long exhale. Keeping our feet wide at the back of our mat. Let's start to walk our hands back toward our feet. And we'll put a generous bend in our knees. Let the belly come down on the legs and dangle your head to the floor. Pause here. Explore bending and straightening your knees. And then begin to explore fingertips walking to the outside edges of your feet. Knees as bent as you need them to be, or as straight as you like. Coming back to center, friends, let's bring the fingertips to the elbows and pull the elbows down, framing the head with the arms, rag doll. And as the fingertips come back to the earth, put that bend back in your knees, press hands to legs, stand up, come into mountain pose. You're at the back of your mat. Let your arms reach high, extended mountain. 
You can even find a little back bend here if that feels good to you. And as hands join together, cross the heart, bend the knees and come back into forward fold. Inhale to lift halfway. And then exhale, hands forward again into downward facing dog. Feet can come a little closer together. Shifting forward into plank pose. You can stay on your toes or drop your knees. We'll lower halfway down into Chaturanga. And then everybody drop your knees. Let your thighs melt to the ground, then hips, belly, and chest, and come into Cobra, Bhujangasana. We're going to use this pose every time we pass through today. Fingers clawing at the mat to pull the belly forward. Just take another inch out of your skin. Breathe here. And as you exhale, press yourself back up, downward facing dog. Pedal your heels, shift your weight. Feet come wide to the back of the mat. Hands walk back to feet. Bend your knees and scoop your arms high back bend. And as your hands come to heart, bend your knees again, forward fold. Just a little change up on the sun salute. Inhale, half lift. Hands walk forward, downward facing dog. Shift to plank, knees or toes, lower halfway down. Drop your knees and melt your body to the earth. Peel up cobra and claw your fingers into the mat. Pull your belly forward, lengthen, expansion and release all fours tuck your toes downward facing the dog big exhale everybody feet a little wider walk your hands back put that bend in the knee then scoop up extended mountain back then go one more time hands through heart center forward fold Walk your hands forward, downward facing dog. Shifting into plank, lower halfway, and then drop your knees and melt. Inhale, cobra, pause here. Pause here. Breathe here. Notice constriction. Notice expansion. release all fours downward facing dog let's take our feet wide one more time and we'll change it up just a little bit turn your toes out so your heels are on your mat your toes are off the mat and with bent knees we're going to come back and find malasana and for some of us, malasana might be up here if our knees aren't super happy. If your knees give you the green light, come on down into this prayer squat. Elbows between the knees, chest lifted, spine long, breathe here. You can put your hips on a chair or a block if that feels like a better plan for you. Deep breaths, everybody. Release fingers to the earth and slowly straighten the legs. And then just move through a gentle version of that. So you could stay high or drop low, but we'll add movement with breath, lubricating the joints. Notice your ankles moving with this, your knees and your hips. Go a couple more times, lifting and lowering at the range that works best for you. And then 
finding a, that halfway position. Bring your hands to your knees and press to standing. Come back to your mat and let's take the wide side of our mat. Arms open out into this five-pointed star. Take a moment here, stretch. Stretch one arm higher and then the other. And kind of act like you're climbing a rope. Should be a lot of edges to explore through your shoulders, your waist, your ribs, your hips. Move around in a little bit more of a loosey-goosey way here. Taking up some more space. One arm or both, just stretching, maybe twisting. How much space can you cover here? Let's extend our hands up and wide to the corners and then exhale down into this goddess pose and we'll move with breath. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Start to find that ujjayi breath, that whisper sound that creates heat internally. your arms come behind you a little bit more squeeze your shoulder blades together feeling those muscles we use in Cobra two more times and then let's change this to sunflowers arms reach out to the sides scoop all the way to the floor and all the way up exhale forcefully on the down inhale big on the up one more time down and up reach wide turn your toes to the long edge of your mat let your hands come behind you interlace fingers and hinge forward come into wide straddle forward fold let all of that movement settle for a moment. Notice if you're holding breath. And exhale. Encourage your fingers to lift a little higher. And your head to drop a little lower. We'll let our fingertips come to the floor in front of us. Lift halfway and lower a little deeper. Grab your ankles and gently pull. Let's find that again. Press to the earth, fingertips down, lift halfway. Hold ankles and pull. Two more times, lengthen. You should be really feeling hamstrings, calves and heels. Pull. Once more, lift and lengthen and lower. Releasing our hands, let's turn toward our right foot facing the front edge of our mat. We're in a lunge position, right foot forward. Drop your left knee to the earth. Right here, you might just close your eyes and feel the right hip in constriction and the left hip in expansion. Breathe into both of those. Notice the difference breath makes in each side of your hips. Constriction, expansion. You can leave the knee on the earth, or you can tuck your toes and lift the knee. We'll take the arms up overhead. Come into high lunge. And as the arms press back, there might feel like a little constriction in the back of the body, otherwise known as muscle contraction, and expansion in the front of the body known as stretch. 
each pose contains some of both. Release the hands to the earth and we'll move into twist. So either knee up or down, right arm circles toward the ceiling. And find the place where breath now helps you feel stretch. Let breath be what helps you move into something a little bigger. Expand the whole shape of this pose. We'll release that hand to the earth. Let's let our back foot step to meet our front foot in a forward fold. And we'll switch feet. Left foot stays where it is, right leg drops back, knee to the earth. And pause. With eyes closed, what do you feel in your left hip crease? And across your right hip flexors. How does breath feel in your left hip? How does breath feel in your right hip? You can keep your knee on the earth or tuck your toes and lift your knee. Let's come to high lunge, arms reach up high. Just let your arms come back far enough that you feel the muscles in the back working so the muscles in the front can extend and lengthen. Move steady breath deep into your body. Exhale, the hands come to the earth, left arm comes into a twist. Open into a shape that you can stretch, you can expand with breath. According to yogic text, what it is that we're seeking is nirvana, enlightenment, this freedom, freedom from the trappings. Breathe into that sensation of freedom. Let's release our hands to the earth. And we'll step to downward facing dog. Shifting forward, plank pose, knees or toes, lower halfway. Drop your knees, melt to the earth, and come up to cobra. Breathe here, shoulders on your back. Chest expands. Release chin to the earth, press back, downward facing dog. On your inhale, raise your right leg high. Stretch as high as you can, let's pause here. Left heel down, right toes up. Stretch, grow, expand. And exhale, shifting forward to step that foot toward the top of the mat. We'll drop the back heel and come up into warrior one. In warrior one, eyes on a point ahead of us. Shoulders soft, face soft. Feet firm. As you find your breath, find this essence of the warrior that has no fear, that 
by crossing through fear, we find freedom. Maybe fear is the skin we would like to shake out of today. As you exhale, the hands come behind the body. Let's interlace fingers again. Open the chest and start to dive forward from the hip into humble warrior. Head drops low, knuckles lift high. Notice contraction. Notice expansion. Breathe into both. Releasing fingers to the earth, sweep back up to warrior one and open warrior two. Take a wider stance and shift your gaze over your right middle knuckles. Steady breath. Freedom. Liberation. Expansion. Free from fear. Let's turn the right palm and reverse the warrior, the ultimate pose of taking up more space on the mat and in our lives. So we root down and then we grow away from our footprints. Let this pose help you grow into a bigger version of yourself right now. Rib cage opens, heart expands. Breath is profound here. Reach a little higher, lunge a little deeper. One more sip of air in. And then windmill your hands to the earth, downward facing dog. Big exhale, friends. Shifting forward, plank pose, knees or toes, lower halfway. And then drop your knees, melt to the earth. Come to Cobra. Shed a little more skin here. Fingertips pull back, heart stretches forward. There's something right in front of us that we are growing into. And we're being held back by this skin. By these old patterns. Release. Press back, downward facing dog. On an inhale, raise your left leg high and pause to really extend here. Right heel reaches down, left leg reaches as high as you can. Stretch away from your fingers. Use that foot to touch the ceiling, pull away from your wrists. And then exhale, knee bends, step the left foot toward the top of the mat. Nice. Back heel drops, rise, warrior one. Hmm. So if we say, I have no fear, that's a negative. And so what we're left with is fear. Let's choose instead a warrior that feels freedom. A warrior that feels strength. A warrior that knows calm. Arms behind, interlace and dive down. A warrior that knows humility. Notice constriction and notice expansion. Breathe into both. Exaggerate your breath in the places of your body that feel constricted. Exhale loud. (sighs) 
fingers release to sweep high, peeling open into warrior two. Powerful warriors with strong foundation. Eyes shifted toward the left hand. you could choose a way of being right now, what would that way be? What is your way of being right now? And as we turn that left palm and reverse the warrior, be that. Embody that which you just declared. This way of being. Live into this with your whole body. Receive it, expand it. Don't let breath get shallow, let breath be deep. Purposeful. Returning to warrior two. Sweep to warrior one. And exhale, hands to the mat, downward facing dog. Shifting forward into plank pose, knees or toes lower halfway, and then melt to the earth and come to cobra. This time in cobra, lift your hands completely off the floor. Let your back do the work of holding you here. Heart open. Breath deep, feet pressing into earth, and release, hands to mat, downward facing dog. We'll take our feet once again to the wide edges of our mat, hands press back, a hand length, Reach one hand to the opposite ankle and see if you can catch the outside of that ankle or low leg. Pushing with the hand that's on the mat and pulling with the hand that's on the leg. Pushing and pulling simultaneously here. Stretching skin. And then we'll switch hands. Opposite hand reaches to ankle. Push with one, pull with the other. Exaggerate. Returning to downward facing dog. Shift forward again, knees or toes lower halfway. Knees down, melt and lift, cobra. Hands can be slightly off the floor if you like. A little more work in the back with breaths. As we lower our chin, let's press all the way into child's pose. Knees can be narrow or wide. Stretch the arms long overhead. Connect with a steady breath. child's pose let's lift up to tabletop and we'll move into pigeon so for pigeon pose the right knee comes to the right wrist we'll keep the right foot under us a little bit more as we slide that left leg back if this does not feel good to your knees come to a seat with me and let's sit in a figure four instead same shape a little less pinch or pressure on the knee
If you feel like your right hip is tipping to the earth, put a pillow or a block underneath your right hip. You can lower to the earth if you like, or stay lifted. Notice constriction in the front of your right hip. Notice expansion in the back of your right hip. Notice constriction in the back of your left hip and expansion in the front. This beautiful play of opposites. Breathe into all of it. And allowing your hands to come to the mat. Tucking the back toes, lift and shake that right leg out. Give it a nice big shake with a lot of movement around your right hip. And placing that foot on the mat. Let's take a vinyasa forward on knees or toes, melting down and lifting into cobra. Feeling that strength. before moving back into downward facing dog. And we'll take the left knee toward the left wrist, setting up for pigeon on the second side. Remember that the two sides might really be different. So maybe on this side, you'll take a seat and find a figure four. And stay up high or drop down low. Just invite you to follow breath into your body, noticing where that happens easily and where it doesn't. Where do you notice places of holding or bracing or pushing against? Maybe those are places that need to shed a skin. Steady breath. Attention here on the body, in the body. And placing hands on the mat once again, tucking the toes. You can sweep that left leg high and give it a shake. And then invitation to stay here and just enjoy down dog or to take one or two more vinyasa. Your choice. And when you feel ready, we will find our way around to take a seat. A little more work on Wednesdays. So hopefully your body's nice and warm. When you find your seat, bend your right knee. Come into Janu Shirshasana. And we're gonna just really find some hamstring work. So clear the left hip out of the way. And then reach your arms high. 
take a moment here to reach even higher, like pulling one wrist and pulling the other, getting all that space you can in the torso. And with that height, move forward from the hips. Try to move with as straight a back as you possibly can. Reach, reach, reach. And when you've come as far forward as you can, then just drop your hands wherever they land and fold your body over your leg. Move breath into your body, wherever your body needs to receive breath. You might pull the left toes back towards you to get a little more lower leg stretch. come up we'll move into a twist to the right so moving through the torso left hand to right knee right arm behind you can press on that knee inhale tall and exhale twist you might close your eyes here and just imagine twisting up out of the skin just twisting up Letting that skin just shed off to the floor below you. And you rise up through your head, your shoulders and your neck, just lifting, freeing yourself. Easing our way back to center. Draw the soles of our feet together for a moment here, making this diamond shape. And just hold on to the ankles and lift as tall as you can. Pull your chest and head up. Let your knees drop down. A little stretch through the inner thighs. We work for the core to stay upright here. Keeping your spine just like this, slowly extend the right leg. Let the left knee stay bent. And reach underneath your right hip and just move the flesh so you feel that sitting bone connect with the earth. Arms reach, and then just climb a rope. Find a little more torso length here. Pull one wrist and pull the other. Good. And then from that height, fold from your hips, go forward as far forward as you can, touch the wall in front of you, and then just soften your hands down. See if it's possible to let your belly rest on that right leg, and if not, bend your knee so that it can. Bend your knee so belly and chest can be on the right leg, and grab your foot, and then just straighten as much as you are able still keeping that belly down on the leg. It's okay to keep the knee bent. Stretch your skin. Toes pull back, spine lengthens. Fingers may be crawling forward a bit more with each breath. Bring yourself back up. Once you find your tall spine again, rotate to the left. Right hand on the knee, left arm behind, and then just twist up and out of your skin. Sometimes we do this twist where we exhale and kind of twist down, but I'd like you to twist up today. Picture spiraling up away from the earth, through your head. Mm -hmm. 
Let's find our way back to center. Extend both legs out in front of you and start to lower yourself down onto your back, drawing knees to chest. Move around a little bit here on your low back. Give yourself a little massage. And then let's extend the legs up overhead. Flex and point, circle the ankles. Let your whole back rest on the earth. You can bring your hands underneath your hips if you like to give you a little lift of the tailbone into waterfall. You're welcome to lift higher in the shoulder stand as long as you really protect your neck and keep your um, neck in a line and your eyes looking towards your feet. here upside down for a few breaths filling with breath and then just emptying with each breath in we leave our skin a little bit more we stretch each breath out, it just falls away, that which was holding us. Let's bend the knees, release the hands, hug the knees once again into the chest. And with the feet on the earth, just roll up slowly into bridge pose and we're going to come right back down. So just rolling up and down the spine just finding the places where the spine might feel a little resistant or sticky and then the third time let's lift and hold bridge pose feet firm on the earth lift towards the top of your shoulders and if you like interlace your hands underneath you drive that chest open even more Again, this breath in expands us out of that old skin. The exhale leaves it behind. Return to a neutral spine. And take your time now, starting to find your way into Shavasana. So you might take your arms wider and turn your palms up. You might slowly sneak one foot out to the right edge of your mat and the other foot out to the left. Let your feet flop open. Let your eyes fall closed. Notice a long exhale here. Everyday life is like an inexpressibly fascinating new movie, which can't be guessed at ahead of time. In it, I find myself dancing, crying, laughing, shouting, singing, suffering, enjoying. And from the inner core, all this fans the flames of hope still larger. My hope is neither the result of expectation nor the 
expectation of results. The way of hope is that of great nature itself, transcending cause and effect. Hope itself is light and life. Listen to this hope speaking from out of my soul. Come now with intense and honest mind. I will protect you. Do not fear the descent into fire and water. Do not fear any evil. Let's advance, shattering all difficulties. Let's go onward, following the way of hope. Aya Akigarasu. Before we transition from this place of rest, I'd like you to bring to mind a word or an idea of something that feels constrictive to you or in you. Something that just for today, you might be willing to practice stretching out of or away from. With that in mind, begin to move your body in a way that feels like stretching into something bigger, less constrictive. You might be yawning or sighing as you stretch and move your body. We'll eventually find our way back to a seat and to each other with our hands in front of our hearts. As we leave today, let's um, be mindful that um, I'm pretty certain that a, sh a snake who has shed its skin feels unprotected and vulnerable. Coming into a new way of being is not easy. Those old ways have served us well. I'll share with you what came up with me in this practice, and that is um, my old way of being is a view of them and us. And a new way of being I would like to live into today is a being that sees only us and us. That's a vulnerable place because I'm right is a big protection. <laughs> it's 
So thank you for joining today. Have a wonderful day. Namaste, friends.